How's it going guys, Vlad here and welcome to the ninth Arduino tutorial in which we're going to be talking about servos, uh, what the benefits are, uh, what you can do with them, what usually comes in a standard servo package, uh, how you can program them, what's a good way to wire them, etc. So uh, without any further delay, let's get started. You have a lot of options when it comes to servos, uh, so when you go for the uh, very inexpensive servos what you have to watch out for is the uh, plastic gearing inside so those are typically gonna wear off uh, much quicker than the metal geared ones so as you can see I have the MG995 uh, uh, that I'm gonna be showcasing in this video generally your kit is gonna come with the servo itself you're gonna get a screw which will be used to uh, hold in one of these knobs and Generally, the kit comes with uh, one or more of uh, of these uh, rotating heads, if you want to call them that. So what you want to do is, first of all, pop them on your servo. And uh, you can obviously change it afterwards if you don't like its uh, 0 to 180 degree sweep. Uh, because you can obviously mechanically offset it to whatever you wish and you're going to set in your screw like so and you would be ready to get started with the programming of your servo so what you also need to know is the general coloring of your wires so the red one is I want to say always the uh, plus 5 or plus whatever voltage you're using uh, brown is generally the ground and orange is your signal bus so this is going to dictate how you're going to hook it up to the Arduino and uh, just quickly overviewing why you would need a servo for so the servo itself has a control system which would dictate the position of the arm what that means is what that means for you essentially is that it's going to be uh, a precise position uh, versus a DC motor which is just going to rotate um, and unless you place an encoder and do some kind of uh, processing on that you're not gonna really know what the position is so you would use these if you have any kind of an arm if you have if you want to have uh, linear motion if you have uh, if you want to implement a sort of a piston if you want to call it that so anything that requires you to have a movement which would be uh, predetermined essentially you can use it on uh, RC planes, RC cars you can use it on a uh, robot to essentially pivot a camera which would be or a sensor which would use to cap uh, capture the obstacles in front of the robot and uh, many other applications where you essentially need a precision uh, type of a rotation. So let's take a look at how we uh, hook it up and then program this device. So in order to hook up the servo it is necessary for me to use uh, male to male uh, wires since both of the servo and the Arduino have female plugs. So the signal bus generally connects to a PWM pin unless you uh, want to simulate that in the software you're gonna have to use uh, essentially pin 11, 10, 9, 6, 5, or 3. So in, in my case I'm gonna put it into 9. I'm going to also plug in the ground and the power buses onto the Arduino. And that's your basic setup. This doesn't do any uh, noise can uh, cancellation whatsoever. This doesn't really turn the servo on or off necessarily. Just keep sending it a signal and it's going to uh, maintain the control loop of the servo on. So let's take a look at the basic uh, controls that we can do with the servo. So Arduino natively can, uh, contains a servo.h library which you will include in your project. You'll create a servo element called servo1 in my case. In the setup you can set up the pin on which uh, your servo is plugged in. In my case it's pin 9. And I'm going to write a 180 uh, degrees position to my servo which is going to put it um, to one of the limits so you can write 180 or a zero and my loop is currently empty so let's take a look at what the servo does in this case let's verify the program upload it to the servo let's take a look so let's take a look at what the servo does as soon as I upload the program we just created so I press upload 
and as you can see it's at its 180 degrees position so a few things you're gonna notice first of all this knob is um, slightly offset as you can see it's not perpendicular to the servo or if you wish it to be um, parallel to the servo so what you have to do is as I mentioned before this is just something you have to live with because that's a mechanical um, positioning so as soon as you know that your servo is in your is set in your uh, 180 position what you want to do is take this knob and position it as best you can into the position you desire so that's going to be done like so gonna just put this back in really quick so now what this tells me is that when I write 180 in the software the servo is going to stay in this position another thing you're gonna notice or maybe not that well on camera but the servo it's currently jittering every so slightly so I can hold it in my hand and very well feel a vibration and sometimes it makes a light uh, sound so what that is is the control system inside the servo so it's constantly pulling the position versus what position you sent it and it's trying to readjust itself so if you were to force your servo or you have a you have something that's kind of disbalancing the servo it's trying to get back into its original position so what that creates is that light uh, jittering so there's a lot of solutions on the web uh, which provide troubleshooting guides for how to eliminate that. You can plug in capacitor circuits, you can uh, plug in inductive circuits. Um, personally, I think the best way would be to just cut off the power of your servo uh, when you're not using it. So you can do that with a simple transistor. And I'm going to discuss that circuit in a later video as well. Uh, but let's get back into the programming and implement a full sweep uh, of the servo to actually see it go from 180 to 0 and Okay, back. so I've modified my program every so slightly. As you can see, I've created an integer with the position which is going to be uh, storing the current position that I'm sending to the servo. In my loop, I have uh, two for loops, one of which sweeps the servo from position 0 to position 180 in a 1 increments and the other one goes down from 180 all the way to um, 1 so within those four loops I write the position and I have a delay of 10 milliseconds simply to wait for the servo uh, me servos mechanical motion to actually catch on to the position so very straightforward, we're going from 0 to 180 and then from 180 back to the original position and it's going to repeat this motion over and over again. So let's verify the sketch, upload it and take a look. So as you can see the servo is currently sweeping uh, the 0 to 180 degrees positions in a very little increments through this software. And uh, what you want to notice is that the knob is always parallel to the servo in the two extreme positions of being 0 and 180 degrees and this was uh, something that I wanted to achieve through the repositioning of the knob through the mechanical screw. Uh, what you want to uh, notice is that it's extremely simple to get started with a servo you don't really need much it's a very basic connection uh, Arduino provides you with the library so you should be all set and ready to go if you want to use this in uh, some of your projects so let me know if you have any comments suggest uh, suggestions or if you have any questions related to the servo as I mentioned before I would like to uh, research a bit more about some of the jittering uh, problems that people have and uh, show you some of my own implemented solutions so stay tuned subscribe and once again thank you for watching bye